When we hit the 19th floor, something horrendous happened. It was like a bomb went off. We thought we were dead. The whole building shook. The door to the hallway into the hotel blew off like somebody had thrown it all over the place. We were thrown on the floor. The building was still shaking and we're still hearing explosions going on everywhere. So we decided, let's get out of here. David Ray Griffin had published an article, Explosive Testimony. He had gone through enough of this material to pull out some pretty dramatic cases where the firefighters said that they perceived explosions and that these weren't minor explosions. These were major explosions, which these firefighters clearly thought had brought down the towers. And Griffin says, after having read this stuff, I can't question anymore that this was an inside job and that these were planted in the building and this is how this building came down, these buildings. I read his article, like all the stuff he writes, it was good. The examples of firefighter testimony that he gave were, I, I thought, uh, very impressive. These are guys with a lot of credibility, with a lot of experience, high-rise fires, explosions, they've seen it all, much more than the rest of us. Trying to get so many people out, but then there's those secondary explosions and then the subsequent collapses. So I don't know how many people were in there. I know there's a, a lot of firefighters, a lot of public safety personnel were in there. They've worked, many of them, in New York, high rises and so on for years. And their, de their descriptions are often quite detailed. So I was impressed, but I realized right away that I wanted to read those 12,000 pages for myself. Because there were three things that Griffin didn't do that I wanted to do. This isn't a criticism of his pioneering work. It's just a way of saying there's a need for part two in this work. And my work was really part two. Griffin didn't develop very clear criteria for what would count as an explosion witness, a witness to explosions. Uh, so for example, if somebody says, I heard three huge booms and the building came down, what is that? Is that, do we count that as an explosion witness or not? It seemed to me we couldn't because those booms could have been caused by something else, by floors pancaking, for example. Well then, how do we develop criteria? So that's the first thing I wanted to do. The second thing is, he didn't do any counting. He didn't tell us how many witnesses he had. He didn't tell us if that was all of the witnesses in the material, or only a part of them. And thirdly, uh, when we're doing scientific investigation, we don't want to just look at things that, that seem to support our hypothesis. We also want to look for things that refute or give difficulty to our hypothesis, and there wasn't much of that in his article. So, for example, suppose I'd read the material and discovered that, that Griffin's witnesses were 15 in number and comprised all of the witnesses to explosions in the accounts, and that, on the contrary, there were 200 witnesses saying, no, there weren't explosions, they just pancaked down because of jet fuel. Well then, of course, the whole thing would be cast in a different light. So with this in mind, I read the 12,000 pages. Uh, I developed my criteria pretty carefully. You can read them in the article on the internet, published in the Journal of 9-11 Studies in August 2006. Basically, the principle in determining what would count as an explosion was what the firefighters themselves considered to be an explosion. Getting our gear on and making our way to the stairway. Give me your phone number. There was a uh, heavy duty explosion. So if they say, I heard three bangs, uh, I don't count it. If they say, I heard three explosions, I count it. Because they named it as explosion. They interpreted it as explosion. We made it outside, we made it about a block. We made it at least two blocks, two blocks. and we started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if, if they had detonated. Dead, yeah, dead, 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 yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching Ran. it and running. Yeah. I came up with a fairly short list of terms. Explosion, implosion, blast, uh, blow up, that sort of thing. Close, close that close to the building, the explosion blew and it, it knocked everybody over. If they used one of those terms, it was included. If they didn't, it wasn't.
I had to look pretty hard to find accounts by these firefighters that went against the explosion hypothesis. A few of them said, I clearly saw these buildings pancake down, one floor hitting another. And to the extent that they gave that description without mentioning explosions, I counted it as supporting the official narrative, the government position. And there were a few of those. So when I stretched a point, I was able to come up with 10 accounts out of the total 503 firefighters that seemed to support the official narrative in that way. That's 2% of the firefighters. And I found, to my surprise, 118 accounts that supported the explosion hypothesis. That noise, it was a noise. Question, what did you hear? What did you see? Answer, it was a frigging noise. At first I thought it was do you ever see professional demolition when they set the charges on certain floors and then you hear pop, 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 pop? That's exactly what, because I thought it was that. When I heard that frigging noise, that's when I saw the building coming down. There were 118 different people who talked in a pretty clear way about explosions in the buildings. And again, not trivial explosions not the kind of explosions that would accompany any large fire, but explosions that were remarkable to them and which they clearly thought were implicated in the failure of the structure in bringing down the building. I thought that when I looked in the direction of the Trade Center before it came down, before number two came down, that I saw low-level flashes. In my conversation with Lieutenant Evangelista, never mentioning this to him, he questioned me and asked me if I saw low-level flashes in front of the building, and I agreed with them. I saw flash, 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 and then it looked like the building came down. Oh, the lower level of the building. You know like when they demolish a building? How when they blow up a building, when it falls down? That's what I thought I saw. Somewhere around the middle of the World Trade Center, there was this orange and red flash coming out. Initially, it was just one flash. Then this flash just kept popping all the way around the building. And that building had started to explode. The popping sound. And with each popping sound, it was initially an orange, and then a red flash came out of the building, and then it would just go all around the building on both sides as far as I could see. These popping sounds and the explosions were getting bigger, going both up and down and then all around the building. I went inside and told everybody, I think we have another major explosion. Griffin had counted, had uh, given us 31 witnesses. It turned out there were 118 he could have given. The case was even more dramatic, in other words, than you would have thought from his article. We made it around the corner, and that's when the shit hit the fan, right then and there. We heard that loud baboom. I just, it was like an earthquake or whatever, a giant, giant explosion. Then this big gust came, and I just went flying maybe 30, 40 feet. Tumbling. I got up, got on my hands and knees because all of that white shit was all over me. I just kept crawling. My ears were like deaf, you know. The controlled demolition hypothesis is much stronger than the other hypotheses. Those who have suggested that this was an inside job have a much stronger case than those who are trying to support the official narrative of the 19 hijackers.